Welcome back to Glossix Spotlight, your go-to source for all things customer experience excellent. Today, we're absolutely thrilled to have no other than Nate Brown. Nate stands as the visionary behind CX Accelerator, a remarkable nonprofit community passionately committed to equipping, empowering, and forging connections among customer experience professionals at every juncture of their journey. With a storied career as both a seasoned practitioner and a trusted consultant within several world-class organizations, Nate is celebrated for his unparalleled ability to make customer experience not only resonate, but stick. It's safe to say he's a true visionary in our industry. Nate, it's an absolute honor to have you on the show today. How you doing? Wow, what, a, what an intro. Thank you so much, Ryan. And I, I'm thrilled to be here. I love talking about CX work with CX professionals. So this is a great pleasure and happy Halloween to anybody listening that happens to be today. <laughs> happy Halloween, everyone. Great. So, Nate, um, before we even get started, I, I really want to talk a little bit about your nonprofit community. Hmm. Um, what can you tell us about this great initiative? Yeah, you know, it started, I, I was really lonely in my first true CX role inside of a, a safety science company. And uh, it was one of those where, you know, in CX work, a lot of times you're just giving, 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 right? You know, you're trying to kind of almost force people to be more customer centric and you're trying to inspire the organization to really care about its customers. And the burnout risk is there because sometimes you don't have people pouring into you. So I was really seeking that community. So uh, myself and a handful of others, we got going in, inside of Slack with with this little community, campfire community called CX Accelerator, and it, it stuck. Uh, there turns out there's a lot of other folks that were looking for that same kind of fountain input and, and looking to ward off that burnout with great connections with other CX professionals. And we just started jamming and innovating and being vulnerable, being creative with each other. And, and that's really what it still is. You know, we're, we've got about 4,000 people now, which, which is a little too big in some ways. So we're having to kind of reauthor the experience to make sure that we still have that ability to have the campfire feel inside of the community. But I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, but it's just been a wonderful journey learning alongside the incredible folks that do this work, Ran. That's beautiful. Like, uh... I think that the first thing that that pops to my mind when you talk about nonprofit communities and nonprofits in general, there's something that we do here is, is kind of part of our mission and, and vision and here at Classics that we obviously subject to our terms and conditions, but we provide our platform, our services, mm -hmm. um, our AI suite and, and everything that, that we can deliver uh, free of charge for nonprofit organizations, for charity organizations, because we believe to be that we want to be a force for good in the industry of customer communication and customer experience. And I think that the fact that you started a nonprofit community, you know, that just blends in very well with our values. Well, I think that's so cool that you're doing that. And now that I've been through the the process of establishing a true nonprofit. With, with a governing board of directors and, and all the things that are required to be above reproach in that way. I've, I've just got a new respect for the people that go through that process that care enough about something to jump through those hoops and to establish something bigger than themselves in that way. So I think it's wonderful that you're doing that and thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Great. So I think we'll uh, jump right in today episode called uh, In Conversation with Nate Brown, Mastering the Art of Customer Experience Through Voice and Leadership. Mm. Um, and I think that our audience would love to know, like, what are your thoughts? I mean, if you can break down the importance of voice of customer data in shaping a business CX strategy. Oh, my goodness. So how long we have? Three hours, right? It's, yeah. it's so important, Ran. I mean, there, there's no finish line to this work. I mean, customer experience, the thoughts and perceptions that people have towards a business, it's it's an ongoing puzzle that, that will never be fully solved. So that, that's good and exciting, but it can be frustrating, too, because people try to shove this into like a quarterly initiative or some kind of pilot program. It's bigger than that. You know, it's, it's a customer centric mentality change. So, but there is a starting line, in my opinion, and it, it really begins in this area of voice of customer, which, which does several remarkable things for the organization. I mean, one is it's connecting its employees to the customer in meaningful ways. It's that intrinsic motivation of being able to see the impact that your work is having. So often we, we make voice of customer just about cracking the whip and showing people all the ways that they're screwing up. 
and why the business can and should do better, which, yeah, that's critical. But so much of it, too, is intrinsically motivating people and connecting them with customers in good and exciting ways. But then on the other side, yeah, you are motivating the business. You're you're establishing a sense of urgency and relevance on where you need to move in the future. So that would be the second big category. And the third big category of what this does for us, it actually proves the ROI of the work that we're doing. It it shows when when we're creating great customer interactions, when we're knocking it out of the park from a CX perspective, what that actually does for us long term in terms of share of wallet, customer engagement, customer growth engine, renewal and retention rate, you know, however you measure that customer lifetime value, we can impact these things and sustainably grow the business if we can show our work and prove it with our voice of customer engine to use that Gene Bliss term. That's beautiful. And I think it connects a lot as well to feedback loops inside the organization. Yeah, that's beautiful. So how would you like, what is your approach in terms of like change management in the realm of CX? I mean, what are like some key strategies you found successful? I'm a huge advocate of John Coder's leading change. I don't know if you've seen that one, Rand. I mean, it's not new. It's been around. Actually, I'm not familiar with it, but I'm going to Google it right after this conversation. Yeah. So, I mean, there's some great change management methodologies that are out here. I mean, we have Agile, we've got Adcar, we've got Lean Six Sigma, the, the list goes on. But if, if we look at a, a customer centric, a CX change transformation and the stages that one really needs in order to make this work stick, which is what we want here, the, the John Coder model is so brilliant. And, and I'll just give you the first three of, of eight steps. And it starts with establishing a sense of urgency. You're lighting the fire under the organization and demonstrating to them, we cannot keep living this way. I, was always, to- I have to stop you there. Because yeah. urgency is, is key. Scarcity is key mm. in a way. How do you do that? I mean, it's obvious you have to do it. But I mean, how do you actually ignite this fire? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is is through this voice of customer engine. I mean, if, if you can demonstrate how... How, as an example, you're losing market share because of a lack of relevance with, with your customer relationships. You're, you're not engaging your customers the way that you need to, to earn that long-term loyalty. And ultimately your business is moving backwards. You know, if you look at that brilliant, uh, customer growth engine metric that Gene Bliss uses, I mean, you're looking at your customers by volume and value and you're comparing that quarter over quarter. If you see yourself going backwards, I mean, that's a huge sense of urgency driver. And it's like, well, why? I mean, how, how can we serve our customers better so that we can earn the right to grow this business sustainably over time? So, I mean, th- there's several ways to establish that sense of urgency. But, I mean, your, your customer relationships is absolutely going to be a part of that in comparison with, with, com- with your competitors. Absolutely. I think it's also kind of a company-wide responsibility, like cross-departmental. I don't think it should only fall on CX experts or uh, no. customer service or customer success. You, you couldn't have said that any better for number two in the, in the coder model is establishing a change coalition that's, that's a cross-departmental group of leaders who care about this thing and want to see the change be successful. CX cannot be done in a vacuum. It cannot be done by a department inside the company because what you get then is just a spike, just a a silo in terms of the customer experience being one way and then it being a completely different way the rest of their journey throughout their their larger relationship with you as an organization. You got to approach this thing together and understand what does great CX look like for us? And one metaphor that I love to use, it comes from building a story brand. It talks about how the customer is the hero of the story. So then what are you, organization? You're the guide. You get to guide the customer to their definition of success. But that has, there's attributes. There's specific things that a great guide can and should, would do. There's a mentality of of a successful guide who cares enough and understands the customer enough to navigate the journey to where they're actually trying to go, can read between the lines and, and can understand that journey better than anybody else because it's consistent with what your organization does better than anybody else. Your competencies, your mission, your values, your unique personality. You you were created to be this ambassador, this guide. So representing that across the entire customer ecosystem and, and, and it's so represented by that CX Change Coalition 
of, of leaders who represent these different teams that make up the larger customer experience. If you try to do CX inside the customer service department <laughs> or, or just inside marketing or just inside sales, it, it's not going to stick. It's not going to feel like anything relevant to the customer in terms of their overall impression of you as a brand. Right. So how do you how do you make these salespeople, these marketing people, these anyone people that are not CX or customer service or customer support leaders and and executives to Mm -hmm. kind of cultivate that culture? Yeah, I mean, it, it, you, you bring up a great point there, Rand. I mean, so often us as CX professionals, we try to get everybody to care about CX, <laughs> which that, that's actually not what we're trying to do here. I mean, that that's cool. And, and I love CX work. You know, I just happen to be in that field. But like what we're actually trying to get people to care about is our own company's mission and our fulfillment of that mission. In in service to our customers, it's that customer centric mentality, that integrity that comes with, I care about what this organization does and I'm going to protect our brand promise. So, I mean, that that's what you're trying to awaken across the organization is that sense of guardianship. And and so you're a guide and you're a guardian (laughs) as an employee of this organization, you're, you're guiding the customer to their definition of success and you're protecting, you're guarding the brand promise in the midst of that. So what you're doing through this voice of customer engine is you're educating people on where that's going really well and where those friction pockets exist, where people can be a more effective guide and specifically offering them ways w- w- that that would look like. Gotcha. So it happens from within. It's communicated across departmental Mm -hmm. and it's kind of the live by guidelines that everyone should kind of cultivate within the organization. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it should be unique to your organization. You know, not not everybody should work for you. (laughs) Selflessly, selflessly, I'm thinking about compensations here, but that's obviously (laughs) not not the right uh, point. I guess well, it is important. I mean, I love how Daniel Pink talks about pay enough, pay enough money to where compensation is not a distraction, not a distraction from being able to intrinsically motivate people from the right reasons. And if you want to look at those intrinsically motivating factors, there's nothing better than prime to perform, which breaks down why people work well, the, the levers that we can pull to make them care about the customer, the organization, or anything <laughs> relevant to this context. And, and it, it starts with play. It's a sense of curiosity and excitement about the work. I'm not talking about buying a ping pong table and putting it in the office, though I love that. <laughs> it's, not, it's not having the pizza party. That's fine. But like that's, that's just one pepperoni on the pizza. What, what we're talking about is, is making it relevant to the work itself. You, you love the puzzle of getting to solve problems for the customer. You love the customer. You love what this organization does uniquely in its service to the community. And and so these things come together and you're excited, excited to learn, excited to grow, which that's number two. It's that sense of potential. I'm becoming the person that I want to be through my service to this brand. And when we awaken those things, CX just kind of happens organically. And, And it doesn't happen in a pocket either. It's awesome. So I hear you and I agree 100% with everything you just said. And I just love that. (laughs) I mean, I'm trying to think from a hiring perspective, like, okay, well, should I, I guess I should look for people that are more than just caring and empathetic, right? It's, it's, I think it's kind of what I see is, is kind of a generational thing, you know, Gen Z and, and millennials and, 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 you know, I just feel like, you know, Gen Z don't care that much as we millennial are. So mm. maybe I'm wrong. I, I would I would argue that in many ways they care a lot more. Yeah. I mean they, they care about each other. They they certainly care about knowledge sharing and being social, you know, and, and not to paint a broad brush here because individuals are individuals. But but if we're if we're gonna go down this this generational conversation a little bit, which I'm game for. I mean, if we look at Gen X, you know, they were kind of the last of the generations that were programmed just to work a job, check the box, work a job, get the paycheck. There, there's still quite a little bit of that legacy thinking going on in the millennial generation of which I'm a part. But we're starting to kind of break free of that mentality quite a bit. And we're looking for that purpose driven work, that meaningful work 
where I can make a difference in the world through the work that I'm doing. Possibly compensation is not quite as important because I'm measuring success in a different way. Gen Z is that amplified in a lot of ways. They, they want social proof. They, they want to be known. They want to be loved. They want to be in community. They're, they're not so worried about the lofty job title and, and the huge paycheck so that they can go live in a mansion, you know, set off with a moat on some island somewhere. They want to be connected. And, and in that way, a, a lot of them care more. Yeah, it kind of correlates. Um, I wrote a blog article a few months ago to our blog uh, discussing how you can, because, you know, we were dealing with chatbots and AI yeah. journeys and, and all that jazz. So what we're... Um, what I was mentioning there is that uh, how brands can actually kind of craft costume journeys for millennials versus, you know, older generations, baby boomers, if you wish, sure. um, and, um, and Gen Zs. And when I reached to kind of doing my research about the Gen Zs and what they like and, and what they're looking for, and mm-hmm. everything was around one word, empathy. Okay. and. I was amazed because, you know, I'm, well, I can say I work with several folks which are kind of, you know, related in Gen Z, but I mean, you know, nothing is, is personal or subjective, but I think that there's a big gap uh, between the different generations when it comes to, you know, uh, workload um, and assignments and how you deal with your day-to-day in the workplace. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, and I think that it's, it's quite fascinating. There's so much psychology here that, that I am ill-equipped to dive into. It, it, if, Ryan, if I were to go back to school right now to, to better equip myself as a CX and EX employee experience professional, I would be getting like an occupational psychology degree uh, because, I mean, at the heart of what we're trying to do, we're trying to understand why people think and behave the ways that they are. That, that's ultimately what we're trying to, to really understand in the work you of just, customer experience. You just, said, you just said, welcome to marketing in different words. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it's, it's so true. I mean, these things are so interconnected. And, and the psychology that's going on in the world today with the epidemic of loneliness, with what we just went through with COVID together you know, as, as a worldwide society, I mean, it, it's, it's incredible how different the ways that we think and engage with each other are right now. But, but generally, I think what, what people are desperate for is, is a sense of connection and community, uh, which, you know, kind of going back to where we started with CX Accelerator and, and where I think the work of customer experience is moving, it, it's really going to be the organization cultivating meaningful community and, and creating a sense of identity and connection with its customers. Absolutely. I think this word is, is, is more in terms of like belonging right? Mm. So community, yes. belonging. So hope to our next questions. What role does employee engagement play in delivering top-notch CX? I mean, how important is employee engagement anyway? Yeah, I mean, we, we've, we've been hitting at it, right? I mean, it's, it's that guides and guardians layer. Your, your employees are both the guide and the guardian. They're the ones who are responsible to guide the customer to their definition of success. How, how much do they desire to do that? How capable are they to do that? The organization needs to awaken the desire and equip them with the capability in order for that, that CX to be delivered on a regular basis. But, but then you have that guardian component as well. Let's, let's uh, awaken that desire to be able to, to serve the brand promise even, even better, to, to amplify it, to, to reach it out and, and, and attract the right customers to us. And to be able to knock their experience out of the park and to innovate and to co-create with customers alongside them in that journey. None of that happens when we disconnect employee experience from customer experience. When, when you try to do those two things separated, you are going to miserably fail at both for the most part <laughs> because they, they need each other. I mean, the employees need to know how they're serving customers to, to become the person they want to become and to see how the work is meaningful for them and, and vice versa. So it, it's just so critical to, to keep them connected. Right. Yeah. So we talked about employees and, and I think that we'll do this move towards um, customer service or CX professionals. And I mean, can you share your insights on the ideal customer service career path? I mean, 
how should one can really excel in this field? What does the future hold for these people? I mean, wow. you know, it's I know it's a broad topic and I know we're kind of limited in time, but I really want to have your take on this. Yeah, it's it's a it's an important question. I I, I would I would submit to you that there there's no such thing as an ideal career path that, that's a generic career path. I mean, the the idea of career success <laughs> is so is so intrinsic to the individual. I, I was laughing, Ran. I mean, I, I pulled up. I, I'm I'm writing a book with Justin Robbins uh, to to help you know, kind of on a similar topic to this. And I pulled up my old mind map from from like 12 years ago on where I wanted to quote unquote go and succeed in my in my customer service career. And I was I was literally laughing at the things that I considered important at that time because they're they're just not important to me anymore at all. I mean, it was things that were kind of in a lot of ways, very selfish, very selfish to me and just kind of wanting to represent this ideal of success, you know, externally out to the world. And I'm just sitting here like, <laughs> none of this stuff matters to me anymore. Like, I, I, I just want to, I, I, I really want my career to look different. I, I want to have a legacy of servant leadership where, where others are, are able to connect with this work really well and do it really well themselves because of, of my little bit of influence that I got to have in their lives. So, I mean, my mentality has changed so much, you know, even in that, that short time. So, I mean, the thing, the questions that you should be asking yourself as you think about your customer service career, it, it really is about, you know, that type of difference that, that you want to make. You, know, you, you should have a laser focus on some things that you're really good at <laughs> and make, make a meaningful difference in those areas. You know, if, if you're really, really good at, at leading people, then then become that mentor, become that that coach, you know, become that individual who can guide a team strategically and do those things. If, if you're somebody that's exceptionally good at creating advanced connections with customers that awaken a new degree of partnership, then then look towards that customer success path, which is so cool and exciting. If you're a technologist and you want to create new pathways to, to greater efficiency and greater self-service capabilities in this field, my goodness, how relevant are you? <laughs> and, and embrace that, you know, excel inside of that path. So, I mean, th that's just off the top of my head, three distinctive, very different paths for a customer service professional. And, and you, you kind of, you kind of teased there, ran on that, that path of, of more the technology driven path. You know, where I'm seeing that, you know, and, and this is, is hearkening back to um, something that Jonathan Shore told me a while ago. You know, he really sees the future of customer service kind of being embraced in, in Jarvis, uh, you know, from Iron Man. You know, we see Jarvis and he's just right there presently involved with everything that Iron Man is trying to do. He's the perfect guide in a lot of ways because he can see all these things. He can anticipate, he can proactively anticipate all these variables that Iron Man couldn't see, feel, consider. And, and he's proactively guiding Iron Man to, to the definition of success that he had, in this case, you know, helping to save the universe. Moreover, <laughs> he's also adaptive. <laughs> oh, very much. Yes, so, so much. But there, there's another element, as, as I thought more and more about that, that exciting metaphor and, and the fact that, you know, as brands, you know, we're going to kind of represent to our customers that idea of Jarvis and just be present with them in their lives. When, when they have needs, we're, we're right there in the most convenient way possible, but we shouldn't even have to anticipate the need. So Jarvis is capable of all these remarkable things. But, but to me, Rand, there's actually another guide who's the true guide of Iron Man in, in that series of movies. Could you guess who it is? Well, honestly, I can't, nothing comes in. I don't know. Well, to me, it's Pepper Potts. So Pepper is really the Iron Man's conscience. So, I mean, Jarvis is capable of, of, of the what and the how, you know, all these, all these practical logistical things that need to happen. But what about Iron Man's desire to serve humanity and ultimately to sacrifice himself, you know, in, in pursuit of the goal, you know, to save the world? The, the intrinsic desire came from Pepper Potts. She's the one that gets Iron Man to care. So as we think about the future of customer service, I mean, it's really that combination of, of Jarvis and Pepper to me that, that we get to be as, as a customer service profession. We're going to be present for our customers in ways that we never dreamed with this generation of technology. We get to be Jarvis for them, anticipate problems, 
be present to find solutions in incredible ways. But then two, we're there as Pepper. <laughs> we're there to connect them and give them a sense of identity and, and to answer that question of why and to help them to, to really achieve the goal, which, which is to serve one another in these good and exciting ways. It's, it's awesome. I love that. I love how it, it kind of all blends in and, and the comparison. And yeah, that, that's brilliant. Awesome. Uh, Nate, I really want to thank you for uh, coming in today. It was an absolute pleasure having you here. Um, for our listeners, if you really want to, uh, you know, follow Nate, just visit his LinkedIn profile. He's doing an amazing job there. Nate, thank you so much again for coming in. Oh, well, this has been awesome. Huge thanks to to you, Rand, to the Glass 6 team. It's been a really fun conversation. If, if I were to leave with just one parting thought, it's just that CX leaders are community builders. So go out there, get excited about the great connections you can make with your employees, extending all the way through to your customers. It's an exciting time for us CX pros. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, Nate.